A warm welcome to everyone viewing this very important video, Student Perspectives on Dyslexia. My name is Kelly Mountain and I am one of the coordinators at Arlington Public Schools Special Education Parent Resource Center. For the past several years, APS has recognized Dyslexia Awareness Month every October. This fall, staff members from Arlington's Department of Teaching and Learning's Offices of English Language Arts, Special Education, and Arlington Tiered System of Supports collaborated to, to develop and provide APS's virtual 2020 Dyslexia Conference, which featured a month of Dyslexia Awareness Learning Activities for parents and staff. However, this work continues throughout the year and we are pleased to present a student perspective on dyslexia, a very important component in understanding and supporting students with dyslexia. We have eight wonderful advocates who will discuss their individual experiences as dyslexic students. We thank them so much. I would also like to thank our parents who have contributed to development of this video Ms. Sonia Rosen and also Mrs. Chloe Chin, who will be moderating this panel. Finally, a big thank you to my colleague Kathleen Donovan, also a coordinator at the Parent Resource Center, who is managing the technology. And now I would like to introduce Mrs. Chloe Chin, who will moderate the panel and introduce our panelists. Hi there, um, my name is Chloe Chin and I am a parent representative. I've been working with APS for many years um, and collaborating and I've sit on the APS Dyslexia Task Force. I'm the parent of actually one of our panelists, uh, Owen Chin, and I've been advocating for him for about his whole life. <laughs> And I myself am dyslexic, so I know exactly what everybody's been going through. I'm looking forward to being the moderator for this um, student panel. So I'm going to go around and introduce everybody who is in our panel tonight, today. And I'd love for you to give your name, name your school, and when you found out that you were dyslexic. Um, I'm going to go in alphabetical order, so I'm going to start with Eli Berg, if you could introduce yourself. Uh Hi, my name is Eli Berg. I'm 17. I go to Wakefield and I found out I was dyslexic in fifth grade. All right. Thank you, Eli. And Kaya, could you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Kaya. I am 16 years old. I go to HB Woodlawn and I found out I was dyslexic in second grade. Great. All right. Owen Chin, could you introduce yourself? Um, hi, my name is Owen Chin. I am 16. I go to Arlington Tech, and I believe it was third or second grade when I was diagnosed with dyslexia. All right, and Lillian, could you introduce yourself, honey? Hello, my name is Lillian. I go to Ashwan. I knew when I was that dyslexia when I was kid on the garden. Wow, all right. You found out early. Okay, Carlene, could you introduce yourself? Um, hi, my name is Carlene Kelly. I'm 17 years old. I go to Wakefield and I was diagnosed when I was in first grade. All right. And Marat, could you introduce yourself? Um, hi, I'm Marat. I'm 12 years old. I go to HB and I found out I was dyslexic in fourth grade. All right. And Abby? Hi, I'm Abby. I'm 17 years old. I go to Arlington Tech and I found out around second grade. All right. And Adelaide? Hi, I'm Adelaide Meehan. Um, I'm 10 years old, I go to Nottingham Elementary School, and I found out I was dyslexic in second grade. All right, great, thank you guys. So I'm gonna go in and ask you guys some questions, and there's people that have specifically wanted to answer some questions, but at any point, if you wanna pipe in and add to the conversation, just raise your hand um, on Microsoft Teams, and we'd love to hear from you as well. So my first question is for Carlene, 
And so when did you first suspect that you were dyslexic and what made you think you were? So um, I'm the youngest of five and um, all four of my older siblings, my mother and my grandfather have dyslexia um, and they were all diagnosed either when I was born or um, before I got into the school system. So um, right away, my mom wanted me to get tested um, just to make sure I got my accommodations as soon as I could if I was dyslexic. So um, yeah. Great, thank you. All right, so my next question is for Owen. What grade or level of school was the hardest for you and why? Um, my hardest year was probably second grade because I had not been diagnosed yet and I was very anxious. I basically every morning felt so sick that I didn't want to go to school. Um, I struggled in English heavily. So yeah, that was probably my hardest year because I was not there half the time. Yeah. So Lillian, what do you believe is the hardest part of having dyslexia? Um, oh, uh, reading is my hardest part. Yeah, I can believe that. Reading is hard. All right, thank you. So I'm also going to go on and in, for this question include Marat and Kaya. Other than reading printed text, are there other things that you believe are affected by your dyslexia? Um, yeah, I think, um, math was pretty hard, um, also speech. All right, what about you, Kaya? Um, I think tying my shoes were really hard when I was younger. I learned a lot later than everyone else, so that was a big struggle for me. And now since I'm learning to drive, telling my left and my right um, is really difficult. So yeah, but people have been telling me tricks now out of that by putting like bracelets on certain hands or like marking a certain hand so you know that one's your left. So I found that really helpful. Nice. Anybody else? <laughs> All right, next one. So we're gonna go on to um, Owen and Marat for this. Are there certain teachers that stick out in your mind as either being very helpful, understanding, or maybe not? Murat, why don't you start? <clears throat> um, yeah. Um, I went to Campbell after I transferred. Um, there was this one teacher that pulled me out for reading help. Um, her name was Miss O at Campbell and she helped me a lot because I jumped up a lot of levels with her help. That's great. Amazing what the right support does. How about you, Owen? <clears throat> so my teacher was my eighth grade English teacher. Um, she got me to read around 20 books in that school year which is probably the most I've ever read in a school year because she like introduced books to us that we might like. And you could also just ask her for a suggestion and she would find a book that would actually fit you. That's great. Excellent. All right, so um, Adelaide, this is a question for you. So discuss two or three ways that you use assistive technology, like a computer, a laptop, iPad, iPhone, to help you with either homework or classwork. Um, so some things that are like useful are like voices, texts, and audiobooks and podcasts. Um, because like, they're like, useful when you like don't really like know
Yeah, they're definitely helpful. So do you have an audiobook program that you like? Is it through the school um, or do you have a subscription? Well, I don't know. My mom just lets me listen to audiobooks at home and um, on my school iPad, there's also like apps that you can like ebooks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's so great that you use all that. Abby, I see your hands raised. So you want to share? Um, I use text to speech all the time. So I'll take like a, either like directions for an assignment or like blurbs of text and just copy and paste it in. And I can listen to it on like times eight speed, which makes it very easy to get like knowledge very quickly, which is good for finishing assignments very quickly. Nice. Is that an app that you use or do you just no, have I Google text to speech and I click the first one that comes up. Perfect. Nice. There's so much great technology for you guys now that I didn't have growing up. <laughs> All right, so um, Lillian, I have a question for you. What technology has helped you the most in school? My iPad. Okay. How do you use your iPad? How does it help you? Um, I do Lexia. Uh, the app. All right. And do you like it? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, I'm so glad. That's a new app that they have this year. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it works out. Thank you. All right. So, Carleen, I have a question for you about what accommodations have been most helpful to you? And again, anybody can pipe in if you want to include, be included. Carleen. I think, um, uh, there's a couple, but a main one is um, read aloud, just having a teacher sit there during a test or any assignment and just read me everything. Now we have technology to do that, but um, especially in elementary school and middle school, it was a big help. And also um, small group, not being in like the 30 student classes that I'm in now, being able to um, get out of the classroom and have one on one time or five on one time with a teacher is it's very helpful. Nice. Excellent. All right. So my next question is for Abby. Besides your teachers in APS, describe how other professionals may have been helpful, like tutors or counselors or therapists. Um, I had a tutor that um, we found about through a summer camp that I went to called the lab school and it was a fun camp that I was also helpful to teach me how to learn. Um, and she's also my neighbor, which was very funny um, how that nice. worked out. My neighbor, Mrs. Wells would come over once a week and we'd work on practicing spelling, practicing reading, and then we'd always play a fun spelling game like Quiddler, or we would play um, Phonetic Scrabble, which is a very fun one, especially for dyslexic people. If you don't like regular Scrabble, try playing Phonetic Scrabble. Um, it was very helpful. That's great. Yeah, those those people definitely carry carry you when you don't have all the support you need. Um, so my next question is for Eli and Carleen. How have your parents helped you throughout the years? So I'm going to start with Eli for this one. So I came from Wake, I came from to Wakefield from a private middle school. So the last like the public school system like heard of me was in fifth grade when I wasn't really doing well. So I was put in classes that weren't um, challenging enough for me and for people who weren't taking their academics seriously. So my mom fought for me to take. Um, like intensify classes and classes that we both know I could do. So I kind of was the first person in Wakefield to get uh, co-taught intensify classes. That is great. Wow. That is fantastic. And Carlene, how about you? Um, well, because of Eli's mom, um, me and Eli were actually in the same class last year. So it was um, really nice to be able to take an in intensified class, but also be co-taught. Um, so Thanks again to Eli's mom. And also, um, I've applied to colleges a lot 
in the past couple of months and I've had my mom look over every single one of my college applications and um, my dad also just to like catch any spelling errors or anything that I missed. So it, it's they've been a huge help and always being there to have my back um, after if I if I wasn't getting the accommodations that I needed. That's great. How about you, Abby? Um, my mom was wonderful. She helped me get my IEP. Um, and I said I got tested and diagnosed in like second grade, but we didn't get my IEP until seventh grade. And I remember being in one of the meetings and she's just like, my daughter's reading at a third graders level and she's in seventh grade. And she's just repeating it over and over again, trying to get it to like sink in. And she worked so hard and I got tested and she made sure that I could get to all of the tests and the tutors. And now if I have an essay that I need her to read out loud or if I need spell check, she's always there, even if it's like 11 o'clock and I'm coming up like, I need to apply to college really soon. Please read over this and she'll do it. And she's the best. I love her so much. That's awesome. How about you, Kaya? Uh, my parents one thing that really helped me was when I was kind of like struggling with my dyslexia was they introduced me to um, famous people with dyslexia and one was Richard Branson and it was just it was so cool to kind of see that he had unconventional ideas and that really worked for his favor. I just thought it was great that they were introducing me to all those people and I'm so happy for it. That is awesome and I'm sure everybody wants to talk about their parents being awesome right? I'm just teasing. No, I know everybody. That's our job. We had we signed up for it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna move on um, to Eli. Are you able to balance schoolwork with outside interests such as sports, hobbies, activities? Um. Well, since school is online right now, uh, I think it's easier for me personally to balance it because I don't have to have but walking from like classroom to classroom and I can like know where all my stuff is. And I mean, I don't, there's not really many sports going on. So that's a, that's one less activity that I have to worry about. And I don't really have that many hobbies. All I really do is schoolwork. So yeah, I might, I'm pretty good at balancing it right now. Nice. All right. So Kaya, um, it's very important for people with dyslexia to become self-advocates. So describe a time when you had to self-advocate. Um, most of the time it's substitute teachers that don't really understand my accommodations or will tell me no. <laughs> In those cases, um, you should find a teacher that you that understands your accommodations and get them to come help because I mean, my accommodations can mean me passing and failing a test. That's like, it's a huge difference. You also need to really understand your accommodations. So I used to carry around just a sheet of all the accommodations I had so I could really use them and um, remember them because there's a lot sometimes. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. Those it's really, I'd say this is one of the most important things to learn how to advocate for yourself because it will be a lifetime of doing that. <laughs> um, all right, so Marat, I have a question for you. What are some differences that you've noticed between grade school and secondary school? Definitely the teachers and how um, in middle school they accepted more of my dyslexia. And in middle school, they said more like it's a behavioral thing and that I wasn't trying. But middle school is better. And yeah, it's better. That's great. Yeah, unfortunately, we hear that too often that it sounds like you're not trying hard enough. But we know you're working a hundred times harder than most kids. And it's just not as easy. Um, all right, so my next question is for Eli and Abby. What has been your most challenging or easiest or most enjoyable class in APS so far and why? 
Um, my most enjoyable class is probably American Sign Language because there's not a lot of reading in it. And I also have ADHD. So when we do sign language, you know, we get to move around and be kind of active. So that helps with my ADHD. And so that's pretty much why it's my favorite class. Nice. Um, uh, with the languages, I took Latin for three years, um, and I also have taken Spanish and I learned French a little bit, um, but I found Latin was the easiest for me to learn. Um, and it's helped me a lot in my other classes, like I've taken some medical terminology classes and I'm in anatomy now, and it does really help break down the words into the roots that I already know from my Latin. That's great. Excellent. So Lillian, actually, I have a question for you about the same question. What was your most challenging class in school so far? And what was your favorite class? Or is? My challenging class is Spanish mm. and Sweden. My favorite class is science and math. Nice. Excellent. So, um, all right, my next question is for Abby. Although dyslexia certainly comes with its, its hardships, many dyslexics who find the right encouragement and support discover that they also have a unique gift or strength. Yes, I have found that I'm very good at board games. In specific, I'm very good with Connect Four and a game called Cubits. Um, nice. What about you, Carlene? Um, actually, meeting with this group has shown me that um, I've always been really good at Tetris, and like all of my other siblings have gone to college, and we've had to pack up all like the car. And I could always figure out where to put the chair to just fit perfectly or um, how to stack all the suitcases when going on trips so that we could fit them all in the car. So nice. That's quite a skill. How about you, Eli? For me, it's I'm a good teacher. So like when people didn't understand the instructions, I would like teach them but I would like do it like kind of hands-on like I'd be moving and then explaining stuff and then they would understand the instruction better. That is so great. Awesome that you do that. All right so my last question is for Eli and anybody else who wants to add to it. So what changes have you seen in the last few years with how APS approaches dyslexia? Um, I've seen that they are willing to accommodate more and change it as time goes on because certain accommodations that I needed earlier I don't need now and vice versa and the teachers there are trying to better understand me and better understand dyslexia so that makes uh, high school a lot easier. Nice and Lillian how about you what changes have teachers made to help you most in school? Small groups because in the loud groups, the big groups, it's always a hard to hear the teachers talking. Yeah, that's great. That's so wonderful. Oh, and I'm so glad you raised your hand because we had a really interesting conversation about this the other day. Can you share with me? Yeah, so over the years, I've noticed how like small group testing, it used to be like one or two people. Now it's a lot more. And also teachers now like actually know what your accommodations are. Like they actually understand them. That's my experience so far at least. And you'd mentioned with dyslexia, they actually seem to understand a little bit more. Yeah. That's great. And Abby, how about you? I haven't done the APS um, process in a bit, but I recently did the NOVA process because I take dual enrollment courses um, and I found that to be extremely easy. We just had to sit down with um, their um, person and he helped us create my um, MOA, which now I just print out and I can make adjustments to 
through Nova and it's, I thought it was going to be super challenging and a bunch of meetings based off of my APS stuff, but it was one meeting, super hands-on, super lovely. They send a bunch of emails and it's helpful, very helpful. That's great. It's so nice when the system starts to learn that they need to learn to accommodate you guys. Uh, well, thank you so much. This was really wonderful. I really appreciate uh, everything you guys had shared with me. And uh, thank you. And keep hanging in there because I know school is not easy, especially these days. So thank you so much for sharing your stories so other kids can hear what it's like and, you know, move forward. So Ms. Mountain, do you want to join us? I just want to also give everyone a very sincere thank you. Um, you did a great job today, and we are just so grateful for your honesty and your advocacy. And we're confident that your perspectives are going to help other students, parents and staff, um, as we continue to support students with dyslexia. Um, we thank you for joining us. And also, we know you all are going to go on to do great things. And um, thank you all so much. You guys should give yourselves a round of applause. Bravo, everybody. Good work.